We are now ready to capture the schematic, and we are going to create an A-stable multivibrator. First, we'll need to locate and place the schematic symbols. To manage the amount of schematic symbols included with Circuit Studio, the schematic editor includes powerful library searching capabilities. The components we require are found both in the default installed libraries and within the Altium Content Vault. And we'll go ahead and work through the following steps just to get a feel for how the search tools work and quickly find the parts we need to place from the default libraries. First, let's go ahead and make the Altium Content Vault available to us by making sure we are connected to it. Uh, you do have to be online for access to the Altium Content Vault. If you do not have online access, you should be able to locate similar parts within the default installed libraries. However, this particular tutorial will focus on the use of both the default libraries and the Content Vault. The Altium Content Vault is completely separate from the installed Circuit Studio software. To access the components in the Content Vault, you must first be online and connected to it. And this is done by clicking the Add Altium Content Vault button in the Data Management Vaults page of the Preferences dialog. So first, let's go ahead and open the Preferences with File, System Preferences. And within the Preferences dialog, we're going to go to the Data Management section, and we'll go ahead and highlight the Vaults page. Within the Vaults section, if you are already connected to the Content Vault, the connection will be visible here. If you are not yet connected, we'll just go ahead and press the Add Altium Content Vault to connect. And then go ahead and click OK. Once you have connected to the Altium Content Vault, you can explore or search for a component, and this is done in the Vaults panel. To open the Vaults panel, we go to File and select Vault Explorer to display that panel. The first components we will place on the schematic are the two transistors, Q1 and Q2. I'll go ahead and refer to the schematic image provided for the general layout of the circuit. And we'll want to go ahead and use the View tab, Zoom document, to ensure the schematic sheet takes up the full window. Mine's already there, but again, that can be found here. And then we open the Vault Explorer and use the search field to locate the transistors matching the search string BC547. When you search the Vault, it will first cluster the results to show the folders that contain possible components for the transistor search all results are in the same folder named General Purpose Transistors. Click that hyperlink for all folders to open the search results, and then we're going to look for a particular item, CMP 1048-01437-1. Once we click on this component, it will be presented in the Vaults panel where you can display the preview down at the bottom and examine the symbol. Let's go ahead and stretch this out here. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for everybody. And we are now ready to place the part. When you're in any editing or placement mode, a command crosshair cursor is active. Moving the cursor to the edge of the document window will automatically pan the document. If you accidentally pan too far while you're wiring up the circuit, just press control page down to redraw the schematic window showing all placed objects. Uh, it, this can be done even if you're in the middle of placing an object. Uh, it's, it's good to be familiar with the hotkeys. So we're going to go ahead and right click on the component here and select place. And while the object is on our cursor, you can press the tab key to change the properties of the item held on your cursor prior to placement. By default, parts will start with this question mark placeholder for their designator. We could either leave this as a question mark to be annotated later, or we can give the part a designator prior to placement. For this particular transistor, let's press tab and change the designator to Q1 and press OK to continue with the part placement. We'll go ahead and move the cursor with the transistor symbol now attached to position the transistor a little left of the middle of the sheet. Once you're happy with the transistor's position, go ahead and left click or press enter to place the transistor onto the schematic. If we move the cursor 
and zoom in a little bit here. If we move the cursor and you will find that the transistor has been placed on the schematic sheet, but notice you are still in part placement mode with the part outline still floating on the cursor. This feature of Circuit Studio allows you to place multiple parts of the same type. So now let's place the second transistor. This is the same as the previous one, so there's no need to edit its attributes before we place it. Circuit Studio can automatically increment a component's designator when you place a series of parts. In this case, the next transistor we place will automatically be designated as Q2. Now, if you refer to the schematic shown before, you will notice that Q2 is drawn as a mirror of Q1. To flip the orientation of the transistor that is floating on the cursor, we press the X key. This flips the component horizontally along the X axis. Move the cursor to position the part to the right of Q1. To position the component more accurately, uh, we can zoom in with the page up key uh, or control and the mouse wheel. We'll also zoom in and out. And we'll just go ahead and get this guy positioned a little bit over here to the right. Keeping in mind, we can always adjust our parts placement later. Once you've positioned the part, again, left click or enter to place Q2. Once again, a copy of the transistor you are holding will be placed on the schematic and the next transistor will be floating on the cursor, ready to be placed. Since we have now placed both of the transistors, we will exit part placement by pressing the right mouse button or pressing the escape key. The cursor will revert back to the standard arrow indicating you have no currently active commands and we can see that the floating vault panel is now fully visible again rather than transparent while we were working underneath it. Next up, we will go ahead and place the four resistors. So using the search techniques we just described and used, I'm going to search for a suitable 100K 5% 0805 resistor in the vaults panel. And this should return this 101301221 one So let's go ahead and click on that again. And then within here again, to place this, we right click and select place. And while the resistor is still floating on the cursor, press the tab key to open the component properties dialog and we're going to go ahead and enter a designator of R1. We want to enable the visible checkbox for the comment and we also want to ensure that the footprint model is using the N version of the footprint. So using the drop down next to the model name you'll see there are three footprint models attached to this component. We have the IPC low density, the IPC medium density, and the IPC high density. The footprint selected here will be transferred to the PCB during synchronization. We want the N version. We'll go ahead and leave all the other fields at their default values, and then we'll go ahead and click OK to close the dialog, and we'll have the resistor there floating on our cursor. We press the space bar to rotate the component in 90 degree increments until it has the correct orientation. We're going to go ahead and position the resistor above and to the left of the base of Q1. And again, you can refer to that schematic diagram provided. And we're going to click the left mouse button or press enter to place the part. And again, we now have a second resistor floating on our cursor. Uh, the comment is already visible. The footprint is already selected. It will remember that. And now we're going to go ahead and position this cursor above and to the right of the base of Q2. Now that we've got them both placed, again, to exit part placement mode, we're going to go ahead and right click or press escape. This will put us back with the command crosshair and bring the vault panel visible again. The remaining two resistors, R3 and R4, have a value of 1K. Go ahead and kick that search off. Now this search will return all resistors whose values start with 1K. So this is going to include 1K1, 1K2, 1K3, and so on. So we're going to go ahead and look at the description here and find the 1K resistor and go ahead and click on that. And again, we're going to right click and place it. 
Same as before, we're going to press tab. This time we're going to give it a designator of R3. Again, make the comment visible. And again, set the footprint to the N version. And then go ahead and click OK. Again, pressing the space bar. We're going to position and place R3 directly above the collector of Q2. And then we will place R4 directly above the collector of Q1. And then again, right click or escape to exit the part placement mode. Next, we will go ahead and place the two capacitors. So again, on the vaults panel, this time we're going to search for a suitable 22 nanofarad 16 volt 0805. And for this one, we want CMP1036040501. Go ahead and click on that. And again, right click, select place. Let's put the component on our cursor. We can now press the tab key. And a designator of C1. And again, we're going to change the footprint to N and make the comment visible. Leave all the other fields at default and then go ahead and click OK. Again, press spacebar to rotate the part in 90 degree increments until it has the correct orientation. And we'll go ahead and position the capacitor above the transistor but below the resistors, and again, refer back to that schematic diagram, and we'll go ahead and press the left mouse button or enter to place the part. And again, we have now C2, and we'll go ahead and place that as well. And then we will right click or escape to exit the part placement mode. The last component to be placed is the connector. This component is located in the Miscellaneous Connectors Integrated Library. This integrated library is normally already installed. If it is not, install it and then go ahead and select it at the top of the Libraries panel. The connector is a two-pin header, so we can go ahead and type header into the Libraries panel filter field. Note that the wildcard is not used for this search, as you're only searching for components that start with the string header. If the wildcard is included at the start of, a, of the search string, all components that have the string header anywhere in their name or description would be returned. We're going to go ahead and select the header 2 pin from the list, and then we can either click the place button or drag and drop it out. In this case, we want to go ahead and press the place button so we can alter the properties while it's on our cursor. So again, we're going to go ahead and press tab. Go ahead and set the designator to Y1 and check that the PCB footprint is the header 1 by 2. Go ahead and click OK. Now before we actually place the header, we want to again press the X key to flip it horizontally so that it is in the correct orientation. And then we'll go ahead and click to place the connector on the schematic here to the left. And then we're going to right click or escape again to exit the part placement mode. With our part saved, let's go ahead and press Control S to save the schematic. And I'll leave this up here for just a second so you can make sure your parts are placed OK. And we have now placed all of the components. Note that the components shown in the image of the schematic are spaced so that there's plenty of room to wire each component pin. If you do need to move a component, as with any placed object, just simply left click and hold on the body of a component and then drag the mouse to reposition it and then let it go. So next up, we'll begin wiring up the circuit. So wiring is the process of creating connectivity between the various components of your circuit. To wire up your schematic, again, refer to the schematic diagram and go ahead and complete the following steps or just go ahead and follow along with me. Again, to make sure you have a good view of the schematic sheet, you can press page up or page down to zoom in and out. 
and alternatively hold down the control key and roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can also hold control and the right mouse button down to push in to zoom in and to pull out to zoom back out. There are also a number of useful view commands in the right click view submenu, such as fit all objects, which you can also see has the hotkey of control page down. So firstly, we're going to go ahead and wire the lower pin of resistor R1 to the base of transistor Q1 in the following manner. So we either want to click the wire button on the home tab and look in the circuit elements section and find the wire button and go ahead and click on this to enter wire placement mode or we can simply hit the W key and this will put us into wire mode as well and we notice once we're in that wiring mode the cursor changes again to that command crosshair. So go ahead and position your cursor over the bottom of R1 and when you're in the right position you can notice the red connection marker. It's a large uh, cross will appear at the cursor location. And this indicates that the cursor is over a valid electrical connection and that the electrical grid has snapped these points together. Go ahead and left click or press enter to anchor the first wire point. Move the cursor and you will see a wire extend from the cursor position back to the anchor point. Go ahead and position our cursor over the base of Q1 and again we're looking for that red connection marker and then we'll go ahead and press enter or left click to connect the wire. The cursor will then release from that wire as it's made a complete connection. And note that the cursor remains a crosshair indicating that you're ready to place another wire. To exit placement mode completely and go back to the arrow cursor, again, you would right click or press escape, but let's not do that now. We're still wiring. Next, we will wire the lower pin of R4. So let's go ahead and hover over that. And again, left click and let's connect that to the collector of Q1. Again, left click or enter to place the wire segment. Again, the cursor will release from that wire and you remain in wiring mode, ready to place another wire. So let's go ahead and wire up the rest of the circuit. Uh, you can go ahead and follow along with me or just go ahead and look at the image provided. And when we're finished placing all the wires again, we will right click or press escape to exit the placement mode and the cursor will revert to an arrow. Space bar there to change that corner mode. Again, space bar to change the corner mode. And again, when your wiring is complete, right click or escape. So each set of component pins that you have connected to each other now form what is referred to as a net. For example, one net includes the base of Q1, one pin of R1, and one pin of C1. To make it easy to identify and name important nets in the design, you can add net labels. So let's go ahead and place net labels on the two power nets. So again, on the home tab in the circuit elements area, we can go ahead and click on net label or use the hot key of N to bring up the net label. This will put the net label on the cursor. And again, to edit the net label prior to placement, we're going to press the tab key to open the net label dialog and we'll go ahead and type in 12 volts in the net field and press enter or click OK. And we want to go ahead and place this net label so that the bottom left corner of the net label touches the uppermost wire on the schematic as shown here. The cursor will change again to that red cross when the net label is correctly positioned to connect to the wire. If the cross is light gray it means there will not be a valid connection made. Go ahead and click to place that. Now, 
After placing the first net label, you will still be in net label placement mode. So again, press the tab key. And for this one, we're going to put in ground and then press enter. We'll place the net label so that the bottom left of the net label touches the lowermost wire on the schematic. Again, as shown in the image, or just follow along with what I'm doing here. And once we're done with that, we're going to right click or escape to exit the net label placement mode. And at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and save our circuit and our project as well. So we're going to go ahead and do a file, save all. And that pretty much has our schematic capture essentially complete and ready to be checked over. Before we turn the schematic into a circuit board, we do need to configure the project options and check the design for errors.